couple in iconic Woodstock photo has been tracked down 40 years later. In 1969, when a farmer in upstate New York allowed his land to be used for a musical festival, every music fanatic, wanderer, and lover knew they had to be there. Hippies and free spirits were all around America, and the iconic festival Woodstock brought them all together. Two 20-year-olds were among those hippies in the Catskills experiencing the magic that would be recollected for decades to come. They didn't know, however, that moments after waking up on festival grass, a photographer would take their picture, turning them into icons for an entire generation. It was a Friday night in August of 1969, and a young couple was at a bar in Middleton, New York. Nick Erkeline was working as a bartender while Bobby Kelly, his girlfriend of 10 weeks, was keeping him company, sipping on beers and listening to the news. There, they heard reports of a three-day festival called Woodstock Music and Arts Fair on Max Yasker's farm in Bethel, New York. Rumors suggested so many people were attending that the traffic shut down certain highways. The radio commentator advised anyone planning on driving out there to forget about it. Don't come, he said. So we had to go, Bobby explained. We were 20. It really piqued our interest. Something was happening up there. The next morning, Nick and Bobby and three of their friends woke up early, got into the car and drove northwest, buzzing with excitement. One of their friends was a Californian named Herbie who brought along a staff with a plastic butterfly attached to the end. However, before the fun could start, the Middleton crew needed to get to the farm and that wasn't easy after they became completely stuck in standstill traffic. The only way forward was parking the car and hiking several miles up the road, gear and all. We walked along with thousands of people, Bobby said. We had no information. There was no texting or tweeting or sending images. We just saw everyone moving in the same direction and followed them. People took over the landscape. Eventually, they set up camp in between thousands of other people, with some in tents or cars, others with nothing but sleeping bags. They knew they were going to get wet, sweaty, and covered in mud, but none of that would matter. It was a sea of humanity, Bobby described. People had come with their own guitars. They were laughing, singing, crying, shouting. You could smell campfires, patchouli oil. It was very, very hot. It had rained, and then the sun came out. You could almost see the steam coming off people's bodies. Of course, such a large event drew several journalists and photographers to the scene, including Burke Uzzle, who had worked for Life Magazine and Newsweek. He'd come there independently so he could take the photos he wanted, unhindered by editor's expectations. As Uzzle walked amid Woodstock's masses, he certainly felt the Aquarian spirit in the air. I said to my colleagues down by the stage, hey you guys, it's incredible out there. People are taking their clothes off. It's really beautiful, he recalled. And they'd tell me, no, no, the editor wants me to stay here and get Ravi Shanker. After a long night of singing, dancing, and loving, the entire crowd of Woodstock goers lay slept on the grass, except for Uzzle. He was up at the crack of dawn along with Grace Slick of Jefferson Airplane, whose gentle voice was calling the people to arise for another beautiful day. When Uzzle scanned the crowd with his Leica in hand, he saw a young man and woman stand up and hug, a mud-stained pink and white comforter wrapped around their shoulders. Beside them flapped a plastic butterfly atop a staff. Quickly, Uzzle captured this ultimate picture of happiness. Almost a year later, a three-disc LP of the Woodstock soundtrack was released, and everyone was excited to buy it and relive the memories, including Nick and Bobby. When their friend Corky bought the album, they all joined up to listen. We were sitting around listening to it, looking at the cover, Bobby said, when we noticed the butterfly that Herbie had carried, and then we realized it was us. In recent years, those who grew up listening to the album couldn't help but wonder, what became of the two lovebirds on that album cover? Did their romance last? These days, the now married couple live in Pine Bush, New York, where they raise two sons. Nick became a carpenter and is now a building inspector, while Bobby became a school nurse. They're still very much in love. 
Although people think of that image as a symbol of hippies, Nick and Bobby say they're sorry to disappoint them. We weren't hippies, we were just normal, hardworking kids from small towns, Bobby said. I'd been working in a bank for three years, and Nick had a construction job and was a bartender. Meanwhile, in the full landscape version of the photo, Porky, the friend of Bobby and Nick's, who bought the album, can be seen lying on the ground in his sleeping bag next to the happy couple. I'm very happy to be a little part of the Woodstock experience, Bobby smiled. It's a wonderful thing to share with someone you've loved for 50 years. With all the craziness in the world, Woodstock means happiness. Pictures may be worth a thousand words, but to this couple, the Woodstock album cover is worth so much more. It's a permanent memorial to their love.